Hey everybody, this is part two of the lesson uh, that's dealing with properties of exponents. And so we're going to be doing properties of exponents examples. If you've not yet watched part one, which was properties of, ex uh, properties of exponents conceptual, uh, you should go back and watch that video first. Um, or go to page 259 and pull those uh, out of your math book and get those properties exponents written onto a piece of paper. Um, if you have your properties of exponents, um, I realized in hindsight that I didn't exactly label what all these properties were. So um, I just want to go by and just label these real quick. Um, so this is the, the this one because you're multiplying them. This one was the product property um, because this one because you're dividing on this one. Another word for dividing is quotient. So this one was the quotient property. Start over, write it down here. Quotient property. Um, product property, quotient property. These were the negative and zero exponents properties. Uh, I don't need you to remember those ones. But then all of these ones, these are all called the power properties. So if I ever refer to product property, I'm talking about this feller. If I talk about, if I use the word quotient property, I'm thinking of this. And if I mention power properties, I'm talking about these guys. All right, so using this list of properties, we are now going to do several examples. Um, I have a total of um, 9, 10, 11 examples. Each example is probably going to take one to two minutes. Um, so, and they're going to get increasingly hard. Um, shoot, it's kind of sloppy, but if you just want a quick preview as to what these 11 examples are, uh, it's from, this is my notes from last year, but these are essentially what my 11 examples are going to look like. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then example 11. Um, so they're going to get increasingly hard. So if you feel like you already know how to do numbers one and two, maybe you want to move forward to number three. All right, number one, um, x to the three times x to the negative ten. So this is an example of product property where we can add the two, uh, where when you multiply the two together, you add the exponent and you get x to the negative seven. Now there's this rule you can never answer with negative exponents. So then you would uh, want to apply what we know about um, negative exponents, um, that x to the negative 7 is the same thing as 1 over x to the positive 7. So you, you will never answer with a positive exponent. Um, another way of looking at this one at this step is uh, you could it's x over 1 to the negative 7. So you could reciprocate this, and this becomes 1 over x to the positive 7. But then you would need to apply this, and it becomes 1 to the 7, which is 1, and x to the 7 using, a, using some of those, those power rules. So kind of different ways you can get to that answer. Um, another way of doing it, you could think of this as x to the 3 divided by x to the positive 10. Um, and then you would subtract them, and you'd get x to the negative 7, which is equal to 1 over x to the 7. Or <clears throat> this is what I normally do when I, ask, when I do these problems. Are there are more x's on the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. How many more are on the denominator? Seven. So one over x to the seven. So a lot of different ways of doing of doing these problems. Um, I will give some technique as we move through these. So I have two x to the four, all raised to the fifth power. Well, um, if we use our, uh, our power rule, um, specifically um, this one, we're going to apply this n exponent to both the, the both values in there. So um, 2, this is a 1, so this becomes 2 to the 5. And here you would multiply the 4 and the 5, so you get x to the 20. And that's it. But you shouldn't answer with 2 to the 5. 2 to the 5, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 32. So 32x to the 20. Moving right along, example number 3. This one, 
5x squared times 3x to the 4 raised to the second power. All right, two things that need to be done here. In one hand, we need to use a uh, product property because we have these two separate things that need that, that need to be multiplied together. Um, oh wait, that only applies when the base is the same. Um, yeah, so I guess like we could multiply these together, but then we also have some power rule because we have the squared out here. So how do you know whether to do power properties or product properties first? Well, think order of operations. In power properties, you're multiplying. In product properties, you're adding. In order of operations, do you do multiplying first or do you do adding first? The answer is obviously do multiplying first. So you apply your power property first. So you apply the power property. This stays 5x squared. This becomes a 3 squared and x to the 8. So we've applied the power property, which does multiplication. Now we do the product property, which involves um, addition. Um, numbers, you have 3 squared, which is 9, times 5, that's 45. And then variables, uh, this is your product property, x to the 2 times x to the 8. 8 plus 2, or 2 plus 8, that's 10. So I have a final answer of 45 x to the 10. Hey, students, we had a problem just like this one on the test last year. I thought you'd want to know. Uh, number four. Um, number four looks like this. 5x to the 7 times 3x to the negative 4. Boring old product property. 3 times 5, 5 times 3 is 15 x to the 4 times x to the neg or x to the 7 times x to the negative 4 7 plus negative 4 is 3 so this is 15 x to the 3 done number 5 okay first set of parentheses negative 6 x to the 4 m to the 3 second set of parentheses 4 x m to the 5 third set, negative x to the sixth m. <clears throat> well, if I think back to two examples ago when I had this power on the outside, I don't have any powers on the outside here, so I don't have to worry about a power property. I just have to worry about product property. I have negative 6 times positive 4 times a negative 1. That's positive 24. And then x to the 4 times x to the 1 times x to the 6, 4 plus 1 plus 6, that's 12, 11, 11, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, so x to the 11, then m, I have three of them here, five of them here, that's a total of eight so far, then one more there, so that's to the ninth, and then that's it, I have nothing similar, we're done with that example. Moving on to number six. Um, okay, now we're getting now now we're going to get into some thicker multi-step problems. X to the three, all raised to the fifth power, times x squared m to the five, all raised to the fourth power. So we have some product property that we need to multiply this stuff times this stuff, but we also have some power property that this stuff is raised to the fifth and this stuff is raised to the fourth. Order of operations says that you do multiplication first. Um, that means that we would do our power property. Um, x to the 3 to the 5, 3 times 5 is 15, so this is x to the 15. Um, and that's in this first set. The second set, if you apply... apply your power property, x squared to the fourth power, that's x to the eight. m to the fifth to the fourth power, that's m to the 20. Then you can combine these under product rule, x to the 15 times x to the eight, 15 plus eight is 23. m, there is no other m in this problem, so this just stays m to the 20.
All right, three quickie examples exploring quotient rule. Example seven, x to the six divided by x to the two. Okay, a couple different ways of doing this. If you think about just straight up quotient rule, um, six minus two is four, this is x to the four, that's a positive four, so I'm satisfied with that, so I'm done. Um, that's it. Let's look at, what if it was the other way around? So let's, let's call this example 7b. If it was x squared over x to the sixth, you could use your boring old quotient property. 2 minus 6 is uh, negative 4, so it becomes x to the negative 4. Then you apply your negative uh, exponent rule, and it becomes 1 over x to the positive 4. Another way of thinking about it, and this is how I think about it. Do you have more x's on the numerator or the denominator? Denominator. Okay, so we have an x on the denominator. How many more x's on the denominator? There's four more x's on the denominator. Then that's 1 over x to the 4. I do not normally do this middle step. But there's nothing wrong with doing the middle step. Example 8. x to the 6 divided by x to the negative 2. Okay, you could use boring old quotient rule. 6 minus negative 2 is positive 8, so this would be x to the positive 8. Done. That's one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it. Um, I don't like negative exponents, so I could move the x to the negative 2 up to the numerator, and there's nothing left in the denominator, so it just becomes over 1. And then x to the 6 times x squared, it's x to the 8. So it's another way of thinking of the same problem. Number 9. Um, so let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's say it's 18x to the negative 3 divided by 6x to the 4. All right. Numbers, you don't treat numbers like you do exponents. Numbers are going to be very normal, like 18 divided by 6 is 3 over 1. So I have a 3 on the numerator. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to present this. Um, if you follow boring old quotient rule, which I wouldn't in this case, um, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So we end up with 3x to the negative 7, which means that our final answer, we can't have a negative an exponent in our answer, so we can bring the x to the denominator, and it becomes positive 7. But then, what? hey, what about that 3? Does the 3 go up top or down below? Well, this 3 is not part of this x to the negative 7. It's separate. It's 3 times x to the negative 7. And furthermore, it's 3 to the 1. The exponent on that 3 is positive. He's happy where he is. So it stays on the numerator, 3 over x to the 7. OK, last two examples time. And I'm going to want a little extra paper for this one. Um, example number 10, advanced students, try this one out beforehand. So I have 36 x to the 3, m to the 4 on the numerator, and on the denominator I have 24 m to the 5 and x to the 3. Um, and all this is being raised to the second power. OK, so I see some quotient rule in there, and I see some power rule. So how do you know which one you're supposed to do first? Because um, I've been saying you do power rule first, but Order of operations, what we have here is some parentheses. And you should always simplify inside the parentheses first, because parentheses are the very first thing on your order of operations. Well, 36 over 24, those are both divisible by 12, so 3 over 2. X's, I have an X to the 3 and an X to the 3. X to the 3 and X to the 3 cancels out. Or, another way of thinking about it, is x to the 3 over x to the 3. If you subtract their exponents, you get x to the 0. And anything to the 0, we've already talked about that. It's equal to 1. So essentially, these are canceling out, and that's that. M's. Do you have more M's on the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. How many more on the denominator? 1. 
Great, so I have all that and it's still being raised to the second power. And once you've simplified the inside, the parentheses, now it's okay to uh, apply your power rule. Three to the two is nine, two to the two is four, and m to the one to the two is m squared. All right, one more example, and then we are done skis. Um, and this one's actually going to go really fast. 18x squared m all over 28wm. All of this is being raised to the zero power. What's anything to the zero power? Anything to the zero power. It's always equal to one. So this answer is one and we're done. Okay, so um, that is that. So that is our last lesson um, to be watched on Wednesday night. But then after this, there will not be any more video lessons for you to watch until um, you need to watch it on Halloween night. But I'm going to try to have, uh, I'm going to get that video for you um, by Friday night so that you can watch it over the weekend if you'd like so that on Halloween um, you can have a little bit of fun then. Well, everybody, um, this particular lesson, um, students get butchered. Uh, they, they have a really horrible time with these particular problems come quiz and test time. So um, don't back off on your practice on these. What I've heard other students say in the past is, um, it looks really easy when Elliot does it, but then when I try it up by myself, I get lost. And that's practice. The more you practice these, the better you're going to get at them. So make sure that you attempt every single practice problem and that you're able to get every single practice problem correct. Because if you can do every single practice problem correct, you're going to do every single practice, every single problem right on the quiz and the test. I'm telling you. Trust your Elliot. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.